Unit 4, factoring and applications of quadratics. Factoring is a big part of math for the rest of your life. So today's lesson promises to be a little bit on the long side, but extremely important. Uh, the applications of quadratics just means using quadratics in real life scenarios, applying our knowledge of quadratics. And we'll get to that later on in the unit. First lesson, 4.1, common factoring. This is a really important topic, so pay close attention, pause it, take the notes, rewind, all of those fun things. Again, I am Mr. Brash. You can find all my videos at youtube.com slash Mr. Brash. There's my email address, and I am based in Ottawa, Ontario, Canada, the place to live, according to an extremely biased Canadian. All right, so common factoring. So let's talk about factor. What is a factor? The definition that I kind of pieced together myself, a factor is a fact or an influence that contributes to the result or outcome of something. And I'll give you a bunch of examples. For example, Mr. Brash is nearsighted. This results in him requiring glasses. So our fact is that I am nearsighted and the result or the outcome is therefore I wear glasses. Another example is that if you miss a lot of lessons and you don't do your homework, your overall mark will suffer. Okay, so we have two facts. We have uh, the fact that if you miss a lot of lessons and you don't do your homework or you don't do your practice work, your mark will suffer. I'm not saying you'll fail the course, I'm just saying you could have done better. So we have this and. Well, we call that a multiplier. We are combining two facts together and we now have a multitude of facts and we still have one outcome. And so we have one final example that will deal with numbers, the factors of 18. So what are the factors of 18? And I want you to think about those for a second. They're pretty straightforward. We have one and 18, two and nine, three and six. And those all multiply to 18. If you take one and you multiply it to 18, you get 18. Two, multiply to eight, nine, you get 18, etc. So those are my multipliers, my facts, or my factors. Okay, so they're factors. And you don't necessarily only have two. We see here that two times three times three is also 18. And you can have a, a whole multitude, there's that word again, of factors. All right, so common factors are facts that two results have in common. They're, they're facts that are shared between two things. So let's talk in terms of real life scenarios still. A red haired tall man and a red haired female. So if we just wanna put this down in terms of letters, we have a red haired tall male and a red haired female. You know, and if we have both of those things, we can say we, we are adding them, or I have, there, I know a red-haired tall man, and I know a red-haired female, or whatever. So what do they have in common? Well, it's pretty blatantly obvious that they both have an R in common, or red hair in common. We don't know if the female is tall, so we can't state that they have that in common. And obviously, males and females are different. So we can rewrite this, and we can say that this line what we've said here is the same as saying the tall male and the female are both redheads. We're kind of packaging them together and we're saying that red hair is a trait that these people both have. And we want to talk about going back to the math that we've been doing in the past. Well, we can say that the red hair applies to this and the red hair also applies to this. I'll let you make your own connections as to the arrows that I just drew. So what if we wanted to talk about, okay, greatest common factor, because you can have more than one thing in common. So there's, there's something called the GCF, or the greatest common factor, and these are the most shared facts. So I'll use the, the, the male and the female scenario again. We've got a red-haired tall male who wears glasses, and a red-haired female who wears glasses. So we go back to the letters. We have a red-haired tall male who wears glasses and a red-haired female who wears glasses. And let's take a look at what they have in common. The male is red-haired with glasses. The female is red-haired with glasses. 
And so similarly to the last example, I can say that red hair and glasses are traits that both the tall male and the female have in common. And if we were writing this in terms of math and using proper mathematical writing, we would say that the above line is the exact same or equal to this current line. Okay, so now let's talk math. Let's, let's actually put this into context. You have a three by five rectangle. So let's, let's just draw a rectangle, just any old, any old rectangle. And you also have a three by three square. I'll try and draw it the same size. So we have a three by five rectangle and a three by three square. Well, what do they have in common? If you said five, you'd be crazy. They have a three in common. They both share the same, you know, what, whatever you want to call this, the width, let's say, okay? So if we were talking about the area of this rectangle is three times five, the area of this square is three times three, what is the greatest value that these two have in common? Well, it's not the five because the square does not share the five. So in this particular case, the greatest common factor is three. So let's, you know, use more difficult numbers. What's the greatest common factor between 24 and 32? So let's go through them. You know, did four go into both of them? Yes, four goes into both of them. Just two, yeah, okay, but two is less than four. Does six go into both of them? No. Does eight go into both of them? Yes. Eight goes into both of them. And as a matter of fact, that is what they both have in common. We know that 24 is made up of three times eight, and 32 is just another eight. It's four times eight. So the GCF in this particular case is eight. The greatest common factor is eight. So here's the two factors of 24 that we're discussing. Now, does 24 have other factors? Yes, it does. I mean, you know, two and four and six and 12. But the one that was the most common or the highest value, I should say, with 32 is the eight. All right, that was, you know, tricky, but let's try another one. So what is the greatest common factor between 36 and 54? So you really need to have your multiplication tables down. Well, let's, let's dissect 36. 36 is made up of 2 times 18, if, we're, if we were to go smallest. Now, obviously, 1 times 36, but, you know, okay, 1 times 36, but 2 times 18. Well, let's talk about the 18. What's 18 made up of in terms of smallest factors? 2 times 9, okay. What's nine made up of? Three times three. All right, now you might be staring at this going that I missed six. Six goes into 36, I missed 12. And you're right, except for the fact that I also have those encompassed with the fact that two times three is six. Or furthermore, two times two is four, times three is 12. So, you know, they're, they're all here. This is not a perfect factor tree. I'm just trying to, you know, kind of doodling my way through the problem. So what do we know about 54? Well, 54 is an even number, so it divides by two. So two times what? And it's two times 27. Now, unfortunately, 27 is not something that 36 has in common, but we do know, we also know that 27 is three times nine. And so you might jump the gun and you might say, oh yeah, okay, it's the nine. Nine is the greatest common factor between uh, 54 and 36. But you've forgotten a potential factor of 54. 54 does divide by 2, um, and the answer is 27, and then 27 divides by 3, but does 54 divide by 3? And the answer is yes. 54 is actually 3 times 18. So you have to kind of be careful, you know, and, I, and again, I, I stated before, this is not a perfect factor tree. I'm just rhyming off factors here. So you really need to know your multiplication tables. And I taught it, I'm, I'm saying it this way in this lesson on purpose to show that you just, you need to know your multiplication tables and you need to try and try again until you get the highest factor. All right, well, let's, let's do it with the 18. So the, the actual greatest common factor is 18. Perfect. So 
total GCF of this one is 18. Okay, so let's try this now with some uh, algebraic expressions with variables in them. So 9x squared and 24x. The numbers we've got, we, we, we've got that down pat, we can figure that out. But what about these x's? Now I'd like to do a little side, a little side thing on, on, on this one. So let's ignore this particular question for a second and let's focus on the side note. The greatest common factor between x to the power of 7 and x to the power of 4. And I want you to consider what does x to the power of 7 actually look like? x to the power of 7 is 7 x's multiplied times each other. That's 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7. And x to the power of 4 is 4 x's multiplied times each other. And so the only factors that these two terms have is are, are x. This has several x's, and this has several x's. But we can chunk them. We can chunk them, and we can say that here's two x's and here's five remaining x's and so this could be a factor and that could be a factor. So what do they have in common? Well the x to the 7 has four x's in it and so does the x to the 4. And so the greatest common factor here is the four x's which we don't write it like this, we write it like this. All right, so let's go back to the question at hand. What is the greatest common factor between 9x squared and 24x? Let's, let's deal with the number. The greatest common factor in terms of the number. Okay, so 9 doesn't go into 24. I know that 9 is only made up of 3 times 3, so 3 goes into 24, so that works out well. 3 times 8 is 24. All right, so it looks like it's 3. So it's 3, but that's not the end of it. I, we, you know, this particular term itself has two factors, a 9 and an x squared. And so we have to make sure that we encompass all of that. So what is common between x squared and x? And the answer, if you base this on my side note here, is that they both have a single x in common. And so we are going to say that that is something that they have in common. So the greatest common factor between these two is 3x. All right, let's let's do a little recall. Let's let's go back in time. We'll try something old. Let's expand and simplify what we have here. I want us to really kind of examine what it is that we have here. What we have is that we have some facts being multiplied. Just use the terminology that I used at the beginning of this video is that we have and then, you know we have actually we have more than two facts because three would be a fact x would be a fact and then this bracket would be a fact but I'm just gonna point at the major items we'll call 3x one item and what we want is a result so let's expand and simplify and when we expand we do the 3x times the 4x squared and we get 12x to the power of 3 and then we'll do the 3x times the negative 5 and so we get negative 15x. And so our result is this statement, 12x cubed minus 15x. So that's expanding and simplifying. It's something we've been doing for a while now. Uh, the distributive property, if you will. But what if we want to go backwards? What if the question started off as 12x cubed minus 15x? And what we really wanted to know was what were the factors that created this statement. All right, so this is where the real lesson comes into play. I mean, greatest common factor is actually quite a simple topic. Here's our new skill that we're going to have to try and utilize. We're going to go backwards. We're going to say factor this statement, factor this expression. I've got 100x to the power of 5 and 35x squared y. And it's our job to find out what they have in common and not only to find out what they have in common, but to actually, you know, create a statement that looks like this to factor it. So pay close attention to what I'm about to do. So do they have 10 in common? No. So it really looks to me like 5 is the greatest common factor for the number. So we'll say, okay, so this is going to be equal to 5 something, something, something. All right, so we know that we have a 5 in common between the two. So what about the 
variables. What about these statements? Well, we learned in the previous slide that the that the exponents will tell us how many items they have in common. So here's five x's and here's two x's. So I can't I can't say that they have five in common. They don't have four in common. They don't have three in common. They have two in common between the two. So if I was generating a greatest common factor statement, I would say this. And do they have a y in common? No, they don't. Only this 35 term, the, the, the term with a coefficient of 35 has, has the y. So they don't have it in common. And if I was just asking you what the greatest common factor is, you'd be done. This is the greatest common factor. But what we're going to do is we're going to say that if this is one of the factors, if this is the statement that goes out in front of the brackets, what's left over? What goes inside the brackets? And it's actually just the exact opposite of expansion. So expansion is multiplication. So what's the opposite of multiplication? The opposite is division. And what we're going to do is we're going to systematically divide these by the greatest common factor. And it sounds a little bit more difficult than it is. So what's 100 divided by 5? 100 divided by 5 is 20. And what's x to the power of 5 divided by x to the power of 4? Well, I want you to go back to your exponent rules from your previous grades. And if you had x to the power of 5 divided by x to the power of 2, you would have 5x's over top of 2x's. And we know that an x divided by an x is the single number 1. And so you'd be left with x to the power of 3 because of the exponent rule to subtract your exponents. So what I'm left with after dividing x to the power of 5 by x to the power of 2 is x to the power of 3. So that's 20x to the 3. And a positive 35 divided by 5 is positive 7. And if I'm dividing x squared by x squared, anything over itself is 1. So that's just going to be you know 7 times 1, which I don't really need to write there. And I'm not dividing the y by anything. I'm, I'm not dividing the y by something that will get rid of it or change it, so it sticks around. And so our final statement should look like this. And you may have just been blown away. This, this might be something that is totally new and you just don't get it. Don't worry, there's other examples that I'm going to go through. But what I want to prove to you is that it's correct. So I'm going to check my answer. And if you're ever checking your answer, you really want to make sure the person reading your work knows that this is a check. Because if it only says factor, you don't want to expand it back out. That's backwards. I'm going to check my work by expanding it back out. So 5 times 20 is 100. x squared times x to the 3, add your exponents, that's x to the 5. 5 times 7 is 35 and the x squared is going to come along for the ride. It's almost like it's being multiplied by 1. And it's actually not that it's almost like. It is. It's getting multiplied by 1. And we still have the y. And it's exactly the statement I started out with. So my answer in the purple here is correct. All right, let's move on. Let's, let's try another example. A little bit larger example, but it's the same process. Now we're going to look for a greatest common factor. So what's my greatest common factor in these three terms? And I chose simple coefficients. It's 3. So the numeric uh, greatest common factor, let me just go back to purple, the numeric greatest common factor is 3. And now we have to discover what the variable's common factor is. So I've got an x to the 4, an x to the 3, and an x to the 2. I can only take 2. I can't take 3 because the final term here doesn't have 3. So I have to say that a maximum of 2x's is what they have in common. And in terms of the y values, it's actually a 2 as well. They all have y to the power of 2 in common. And so that's my greatest common factor. And so what I'm going to do now is I'm going to divide everything by the greatest common factor to go back in time and to find out what, what the original statement might have been. So three, uh, 9 divided by 3 is 3. x to the 4 divided by x squared is x squared. y to the 4 divided by y squared is also y squared. And then 12 divided by 3 is 4. x to the 3 over x to the one, 2 sorry, is just x. And y to the 2 over y to the 2 is 1. And if I want to, I can write times 1. But we don't need to write times 1 because multiplying by 1 doesn't do anything. 
And then we have negative 6 divided by 3 is negative 2. x squared over x squared is 1. Again, I could write it times 1, but what's the point? And y to the 3 over y squared is y. Let's try one more. Negative 180x to the power of 4y minus 30xy. Greatest common factor between negative 180 and negative 30. Well, the very beginning of both of those statements, negative 180 and negative 30, they both have a negative in common. So I can actually take that as a greatest common factor, negative 1. But they also have something else in common. Does 180 have something in common with 30 other than 10? 10 is pretty obvious that they both divide by 10. And the answer is, yeah, 30. They both have 30 in common. So that's my greatest common factor for the, for the coefficients. And the x's, they can say that they have a single x in common. And they also have a single y in common. Both of these have a y in them. So there's my greatest common factor. So now let's factor it out. What's 180 divided by 30? 180 divided by 30 is 6. x to the 4 divided by x is x to the 3 y divided by y is 1. So I could mul I could say multiply by 1, but that wouldn't do anything to this statement, so I'm not going to. And that's it for the first one. Notice now that it's positive. It's a positive 6 because negative 180 divided by negative 30 is positive 6. Okay, next one. Negative 30 divided by negative 30. Well, that's easy. That's positive 1. And this time I have to write it because it's, you know, it's plus one of these things. I wasn't writing it before because it was a multiplication. And x divided by x is one, so I could write it one times one. And this is the scenario where I don't need to write it because one times one is one. And then y divided by y is also one, and again I could write it, but what's the point? And so what I'm left with is six x cubed plus one. And this has been factored, and you can check it. I can say to myself, is it correct? And, and I'll show the person reading my work by telling them I'm checking my work. You don't just multiply it back out willy-nilly. It did not tell you to expand. So negative 30 times 6 is negative 180. x times x cubed is x to the 4. And the y has to be involved as well. And negative 30 times 1 is negative 30. x times 1 is x. y times 1 is y. And I have the original statement, so I was correct. I'm good to go. And you can always do these checks on scrap paper. It's really helpful. So what's the link to quadratics? This apparently is an extension of our first unit on quadratics. And I told you that this is going to be an application of quadratics. So why are we learning factoring? Well, if I give you this statement, y equals 2x squared minus 4x, what format is that in? Is that in vertex form, factored form, standard form? Well, that's in standard form. Now it's missing the c. It's you know you might not have noticed it's in standard form, but this is y equals a x squared plus b x plus c, and in this case c is just zero. And I'm asking for the zeros. What are the zeros of the quadratic? Well, I suppose we could make this whole thing equal to zero and try and solve, and that's definitely one way to do it. But is there another way? And the answer is yes. I wouldn't be showing you this if there wasn't. We're going to factor this. Let's factor y equals 2x squared minus 4x. So what do they have in common? Well, they have a 2 in common. But what else do they have in common? They have an x in common. And when I do that, 2 divided by 2 is 1. x squared divided by x is x. Negative 4 divided by 2, negative 2. And x over x is 1. So it goes bye-bye. It's gone. Well, now, what have we done? What form is this now in? It's not in standard form anymore, and it's not squared, so it's not in vertex form. And if we just take a close enough look, I'll give you a little hint. That's in factored form. And so my zeros are 0, and they're also at, or the other one is also at. 2 because here's my zeros. So by factoring standard form, we get factored form, 
Hence why it's called factored form. Just to have another example, just, just because. Here we have another factored form, not a standard form. This is a factored form quadratic, and I'm asking, what is the a value? You, but you're looking at this and you're saying it's one. Is it not one? I, I'm staring at this, it looks like it's a one. Well, it might not be. Let's take a look at these two brackets. X and four have nothing in common, so nothing to do there. But six X and nine have something in common. They share a three. So let's take a look at this here and say that when we're in factored form, do we normally see, do we normally see a negative sign at the beginning of this statement? And if we take a look at what factored form is supposed to be, the X's are not supposed to be negative. That's, that's distinctly positive. All right, so we're gonna factor that out as well. Let's factor out the negative and the three. Now they don't have an X in common, so we'll just keep going. And so negative six divided by negative three is two. The X has to stick around. And positive nine divided by negative three is negative three. The X minus four didn't have to be touched. It's just sticking around. And now we have a new factored form. It changes the A value. It doesn't really change the A value. The A value is hiding. But now I know that my A value is negative three. It also gives us a better look at what the zeros are because this is a very different statement, well, slightly, than this. Okay, so there's one kind of last way to factor for today in terms of common factoring, and it's factoring by grouping. If you have a large statement like this and none of them have anything in common, you might be able to group them and do little, little bits of factoring. Let's examine these four terms. Numerically, they don't have anything in common other than a one. So it looks like our greatest common factor numerically is a one. Well, that, you know, that's not effective. If we take a look at the variables, only three of them have an X. The fourth term does not have an X. Only three of them have a Y. The first term does not have a Y. So these have nothing in common. So what can we do? Well, we're going to group some pieces of it. And I've made this one pretty simple. We're gonna just take the first two and we're gonna take the last two. And notice I'm, I'm chunking the plus sign with the 4xy. And we're gonna individually factor them. So what does 3x squared and 6xy have in common? Well, they have a three in common, because three goes into both, and they have an x in common, because x is, is, is in both. And so what I'm left with here is a one x. Negative six divided by three is negative two. X divided by X is one, and the Y sticks around for the ride. All right, so I just factored these two here. We're gonna leave that there. Let's factor these two. A four and an eight have obviously a four in common. I'm gonna use the positive four to do this. And they don't have an X in common, so I can't take an X, but they do have a Y in common. And so now I'm going to divide. So four divided by four is one. X divided by one is X. Y divided by Y is one, good. Negative X divided by four is negative two. And Y squared divided by Y is Y. All right, we factored these two chunks. Unfortunately, we're not done. Take a good long look at what we have. We have three X and x minus 2y plus 4y and x minus 2y. They're the same thing. Because I'm a big fan of showing similar examples, let's go off to the side here and let's say we had 3x and a 4y and the thing that was there instead of the bracket was a smiley face. Well, you'd say they have smiley face in common. Hey, you're right, they do have smiley face in common. And so I can say that smiley face is my greatest common factor. Smiley face is my greatest common factor and if I divide smiley face by smiley face, I get one, the three X sticks around. Smiley face divided by smiley face is one, the four Y sticks around. 
Okay, but it's not a smiley face, it's a yellow highlighted bracket. But they do have that yellow highlighted bracket in common. That's their greatest common factor at this moment in time. So I'm going to factor x minus 2y out of this statement. 3x times this bracket divided by this bracket turns into just 3x. And 4y times this bracket divided by the bracket turns into just 4 why? Similarly to how I had it with the smiley face example. And so now we're really factored. So this was a two-step problem. So we had to group them first before we were able to fully factor them. And this is a bit of an acquired skill, so you're going to have to do a lot of practice on this. And that's about it for common factoring anyway. So I really suggest you practice as many factoring questions as you can. My students, your practice questions are listed on our website. You know where to find them. Uh, for anyone else who's watching this video, Khan Academy has a phenomenal factoring exercise on their website. And you can find common factoring worksheets all over the internet by doing a quick Google. If you have a textbook handy, uh, it's grade 9 or 10 or 11 skill, depending on what province or country you're living in. And I highly suggest you practice common factoring until you are blue in the face. Until next time, I'm Mr. Brash. Thanks for watching.